When you hear the name Genghis Khan, you might think about the fierce warrior that built an empire that shattered the boundaries of what believed of what was possible. In the 13th and 14th century, he was able to conquer lands from China and Persia to large parts of Russia and Ukraine, and he was even at the gates of Vienna. He was so successful in military conflict that his strategies and tactics are still studied in military academies today. And while he built the largest contiguous land empire in history, there is a darker side to his reign. One that is rarely talked about. His conquest of entire continents demanded several sacrifices that we would today classify as horrifying and unimaginable. Welcome to Past Perspectives, and today we are taking a look at the horrifying things Genghis Khan did to captive women while he was conquering Asia and large parts of Europe. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get to know all the history topics you have never learned about in school. When Genghis Khan and his fearless Mongol warriors conquered a city or a village, they didn't just take the territory, but they took the survivors as prisoners so they could now serve the Mongolian Empire. A lot of the time, these captives wanted to resist, and therefore the Mongol warriors used several brutal tactics to break the will of the people so they were able to secure their submission. Among these captives were women that faced a grim future and were seen as the spoils of war. Now there are people that argue that the Mongols were nicer than other conquering armies of the time, but if you look into historical accounts and their evidence, then you will see that they paint a different picture. Once captured, the lives of these women became worthless in the eyes of society, and they only lived because of the mercy of their captors. They then could be sold, enslaved, or even killed, depending on the mood of their captors. After they have been brought back into the heart of the Mongolian Empire, their fate also was dependent on the part they were brought to. See, the Mongol Empire was vast and had different groups and subcultures, so the treatment of women could vary. However, there have been common patterns that we are going to take a look at in detail. Most of them were sent to work in labor camps, others were put into harems, some were lucky and got married to their captors, and some even had to serve in the Mongolian army. In the following, we are going to take a look at each fate these women met in detail. There is even a well-known Mongolian saying that summarizes the situation of all of these women that goes, a woman's greatest glory is to have no history, and based on this saying, your future would have been decided. As you can imagine, these women were turned into commodities with their worth measured by their skills, beauty, or the alliances they could bring to the Mongolian Empire. On the flip side, if a woman did not fit into any of these categories and the captors thought she had no value to the empire, a lot of the times they would end up being executed right away. This would often happen to elderly women as the Mongols believed that they were not able to do any more meaningful work. Now on the other side, those that stood out because of their beauty were brought into Genghis Khan's harem. Once inside the harem, they were categorized into ranks. The highest ranking women in the harem were usually the wives of Genghis or his favorite concubines and they had specific roles and duties that were considered prestigious. For example, they often served as political advisors, negotiators, or even managed the household finances. And yes, this goes against the popular belief that the harem was just for Genghis Khan's fun, and while this was the case, there have also been several other cases where these women have been used. In contrast, if you were a lower-ranking woman, you were confined to menial tasks and had little to nothing to say in the empire. They might serve as handmaidens, cooks, or nurses for children, but regardless of their rank, each woman lived in a strictly controlled environment, and every single step was closely watched to prevent any riots from happening. Now aside from fulfilling traditional roles, women in the harem also served specific cultural and spiritual functions. They were often seen as vessels of purity, and they participated in various rituals to give blessings and good fortune to the great Khan and his empire. While this might sound pretty privileged, you have to keep in mind that they had to obey the master's command, and they could still do with these women whatever they wanted. And despite the relative luxury and security they had, the harem was ultimately a golden cage. These women had no personal lives anymore. They were thousands of miles away from their families and they only lived at the mercy of the Khan's desires. The beauty didn't save them from the volatile politics inside the harem and falling out of favor could result in harsh consequences that ranged from demotion to even death. Now, after the death of Genghis Khan, 
Even those that had high ranks in the harem were usually forgotten and left to fend for themselves in a society that stigmatized them for their past. These women were often excluded from the community, their children were marginalized, which created a cycle of suffering that extended to the next generation. However, during the time of the harem, there have been several women that managed to stand out from the crowd and they found unique ways to leave their own impact on the Mongol Empire. Among them, the most famous one was Borte, which was Genghis Khan's first wife. For Genghis, Borte wasn't just a spouse, she was a confidant and advisor that was deeply involved in his political and military decision. Over the years, her wisdom and counsel were so highly regarded that she was in charge as a regent when Genghis was away in the war. Another influential woman was Yesui, a Nestorian Christian who was also one of Genghis Khan's so-called golden wives, meaning she brought political alliance along Along with her union. Yesui was often used as a symbol of religious tolerance of the empire, and her faith led to Nestorian Christianity being given particular freedoms, showcasing the indirect but significant power a woman in the harem could have. And the last woman was Jochi Khatun, who was married to Genghis' oldest son. She managed a vast estate and over the years she played a crucial role in diplomatic relations, often receiving foreign dignitaries and participating in political discussions. And while these three women had a relatively privileged life, we should not forget the hundreds of thousands of other women that suffered as spoils of war. Not every beautiful or exotic woman made it to Genghis Khan's personal harem. A lot of the time they were sold as slaves where they then would end up doing domestic chores for the Mongols, or even worse taken into sexual slavery where they were subject to sexual violence. These women played a crucial part in the Mongol war economy as they were frequently traded among tribes or sold in markets. At one point the trade of slaves became so big and organized that it became one of the biggest industries in the Mongol empire, one that thrived on human suffering. Another industry that benefited from female slaves was Genghis Khan's war efforts. See, it's a commonly held belief that armies throughout history have been a male-dominated space. But when it comes to Genghis Khan's Mongol army, that's not entirely the case. Women, while not the majority, played significant roles and had duties that went beyond what we might imagine. They weren't just supporting the men from home, some were right there on the front lines. One of the lighter tasks has been that female slaves had to do the manual labor for the army such as cooking, building up the tents and cleaning the armory and weapons. Their days were arduous and long, offering little respite or comfort. But their duties didn't just stop at household chores. They also had to provide medical care for the injured soldiers without being properly trained for it, which lead to risking infections, diseases and death. If these women weren't able to reliably heal the men, a lot of the times they would end up being executed as well for not being able to help. Others had the nightmarish duty of disposing of the dead bodies after the battles, which can be a traumatic experience that left them exposed to all the cruelties of war. This was a bone-breaking task as they had to drag corpses in full armor across the battlefield, take their armor away from them, and then dig shallow graves for them and all of this under the constant threat of being attacked by the enemy. This was both a physically and psychologically grueling task that had the side effect of dehumanizing them further. Now, these women also face sexual exploitation, with many of them being forced into sexual slavery and providing quote-unquote comfort to the soldiers against their will, so the soldiers were able to be more efficient in the battles. It is reported that the soldiers even lined up for them, so you can imagine that this left them shattered and broken. Now what is also reported in historical accounts is that these female slaves were used as human shield during battle, which is an utterly cruel practice. Soldiers would place these women at the forefront during the sieges or in vulnerable positions to discourage enemy archers from firing, which just further shows that their lives were expendable. And this later became a horrific reality they had to face every day. And even after the war was over and they somehow survived the battles, their duties didn't end, and these women were rarely, if ever, set free. Often they were passed on like property to other soldiers and dragged into the next war or sold into slavery. Some of them were executed to prevent them from returning to their communities, where they could potentially share military secrets or bear children who might seek revenge.
For the few who managed to escape or were liberated, reintegration into society was a difficult, if not impossible, task. They returned home physically and mentally scarred, often facing social ostracization and extreme poverty. Now don't get this wrong. The story of Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire remains impressive and unparalleled, especially through the lens of Genghis Khan being a military genius and sweeping territorial conquest. However, it's crucial to remember that the empire was not just built on the prowess of the warriors, but also on the suffering of countless slaves and women. These women, whether they were part of Genghis Khan's harem, enslaved within his army, or notable figures who managed to rise within the oppressive system experienced horrifying hardships. Thank you for joining us today at Past Perspectives. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can learn about all the history topics you have never learned about in school. And if you want to see the things Genghis Khan did to his own daughters, make sure to check out this video as well. With that being said, thanks for watching and until next time.